It might be logical with a class that starts in the year 1865 to assume that the progressive movement was the first push for women's rights in American history. This is not accurate. Instead, what the progressive movement marks is the growing influence of middle-class women's organizations, which became larger and more powerful. These organizations worked on issues like poverty as well as the right to vote. But the right to vote is not the only kind of political power, and political power is not the only way that women have influenced society. Prior to the progressive era, women had always been active in American life. Women led communities in the Puritan era and ran households of slaves in the southern colonies. During the Revolutionary War, they fought, supported, and nursed on both sides. Patriot women led boycotts on British goods. In the crafting of the early United States, Abigail Adams, later First Lady, strongly encouraged John Adams to consider women's rights in creating the new American government. Women in the new United States ran businesses and households. Modern feminism in English culture was marked by work like the Declaration of the Rights of Women, written in 1792 by Mary Wollstonecraft. The issue then was the education of women, and American values of self-reliance and independence created an admirable record in education. Women attended seminaries and academies, with the first official women's colleges being founded in the 1930s. Politically, women were influential through direct action, such as writing pamphlets and attending community meetings, and indirectly, by influencing their husbands and sons. While this is not the same as direct political participation by voting, their influence should not be underestimated. Many voting males felt they voted as heads of households, not just as individual men. In 1848, women like Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Cady Stanton organized a women's rights convention at Seneca Falls, trying to gain a greater social and political role for women. Gradually, they focused on getting the vote as the main reform. After 1865, middle-class women like Emmeline Wells and Emma Goldman had enough money and time to organize groups to work for women's rights. A number of states passed women's suffrage laws in the 1890s, allowing women to vote on local and state issues long before they could vote for president. The perspective that women suddenly gained equality as the result of the progressive movement or the 19th Amendment is thus incomplete if not totally false. What happened was that middle-class women had the means and the opportunity to organize, to fight for suffrage, to organize parades and write articles and boycott newspapers in an effort to get the vote. To state that women were merely housewives and mothers until the 20th century is to ignore over 200 years of contribution as teachers of children, organizers of communities, and proponents of women's advancement through the male-controlled political systems and social networks. Instead, after many years of influence and organizing, women achieved a greater level of social and political equality in the early years of the 20th century than they had before.